as we prepare to go before the Lord this morning, find yourself in the posture that brings you closest to Him. It's been a pretty interesting, good, busy, crazy, exciting, awesome week. Right? All of those things, right? It's been fun to be with our children and our children's workers and the things that are going on with that. It's been interesting knowing that we were going to have this service with very little to no um, electronic backup, um, which is okay for this kind of stuff, but it's not okay when you're trying to do a song that has to do with the children that they've been learning. So there's a lot of things that have gone into this week. I'm asking that you pray, that as we go to prayer, you pray that the children feel like they are making a difference today. I want them really to connect, and I hope you do too, that they connect to our service, that they connect to our Lord more than anything, and that they connect to each one of us. So let's go before the Lord this morning, remembering, obviously, we have a pretty long prayer list, remembering our prayer list, remembering those who we've been thinking of and missing from around our, our seats, and, and remembering our children and what's gone on for this last week. Let's go before the Lord. Lord God, I thank you that we can come into this place that we can serve you, that we can worship you, and that you're there. Lord, no matter what happens, you're always there to pick us up. You're always there to lead us into still waters. You're always there to help us if we hunger and thirst for you. So God, we come to you now just asking that in all things, you would be glorified. In all of our heart, in all of our speech, in all of our singing, in all of our listening, that we would connect to you, Lord. We ask, God, that you would bless this time together, that you would make this room your holy sanctuary for the next few minutes. Lord, that this place would be filled with your Holy Spirit, and that your Holy Spirit would have free reign in our hearts and minds to challenge us and to change us. God, I pray that you would help us to receive what you have for us today. I pray, Lord, now that as I prepare to step into this pulpit, that you would hide me in the shadow of your cross, that my words would be your words, that your spirit would have freedom to speak through me. And God, I pray that your spirit would protect those ears that hear, that they would hear only what you have for them, Lord, and that you would speak right into their hearts. Now, God, as we come together to continue to worship you through the word, I pray that you would be glorified, that you would be high and lifted up, and that we would be humble and willing to receive. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
as I go, I just wonder if you've noticed that um, we had our vacation Bible school this past week. I wonder if you realize that um, we kicked it off last Sunday. We had, I don't know, I can't, I asked and I think I got a number of like 15 or 16 children that were here. 21. Last week? Yeah, this week I know we're up. Probably 21, 25. And Wednesday was 18 to 20. And so like it's just been a constant growth of having more children involved with our Bible school. That's always a good thing. Always a good thing. And we've been pretty excited about that. So we're we're happy that they have um, that momentum kept happening throughout our time with them. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure what most of you think about the importance of Bible school or Sunday school or even kids church or camp. I'm not really sure how important you think all of that is. But when you read the scriptures, you quickly see that Jesus was motivated to connect with children. So when we come into our church and we see children, that should make us excited. Yes. Now I know there's some, and I, I think I've shared my, my story about being called into youth ministry, but I know there's some of you that see a child and you went, you go, okay, I'm gonna deal with this, right? Because some of us are just overwhelmed. Barb and I have had a two-year-old and a six-month-year-old. How do you call a six-month-year-old? Half a year old? Or a six-month-old, okay? We have had those, those two since Friday. They're a blessing. Grandkids are great. I've said that many times. We love having our grandkids. But it's very different. It's very different. It's a very different life. Barb looked at me today and she said, these people that start their families at 30 years old, what are they thinking? <laughs> I'm with her. I don't know, but I can tell you, I get tired quick now. But I still love to see the kids. I love to be with them. They have an energy, even though they wear me out, they have an energy that's just contagious. And when it doesn't take much to make them smile once they're past the six month thing. Uh -oh. It doesn't take much to make them smile. If nothing else, give them a donut, right? You say that you give them sugar, and you can't deal with them for much longer. But I get it. Here's the thing: it's just really fun to have kids around, and Jesus knew that, and He knew how important it was to connect with them. He cared deeply for them, and He was quoted a number of times for calling them, or as calling them, to him. Right? He would say, bring the children. He even put his followers in their place a couple times when they said things like, oh, don't bother the master. Oh, no, he's not, he's, he's not needing that. As a matter of fact, in Mark chapter 10, verse 13 through 16, he says, one day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch them and bless them. What better reason to bring your children to Jesus? Right? So you can touch them and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. Not with the parents, not with the children, but with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. You can read that account in the other two Gospels as well. If you want to look those up, uh, Luke 18, 15 through 17 and Matthew 19, 13 through 15. They're all the same story, little twists, of course, but... The point is that the children matter to Jesus. And the children should matter to all of us who follow Jesus. Amen. And so we go out of our way to try to connect 
our children with our people and with Jesus. Because we all matter. You ever see children as a nuisance or a bother? Only when they're pulling on your shirt, right? Or wanting you to go somewhere. David all week has been, give me your hand, give me your hand. I give him my hand and he tries to pull me wherever we're going. You know? And usually he does. It just takes this one little finger and somehow he gets me right there where he needs to go. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. You know, he's he's uh, he's making some points there. And I think they're points that we are still able to use today. First question is, do you come to Christ as a little child? Have you ever thought of that? No. No. I'm old. <laughs> I'm grown. Don't. No. No. I'm way past that. I'm a crab now. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try to make me smile. I don't have anything to do with that. Right? Jesus says, come as a child. Do you come as a child? Now let me explain. Because some of you are thinking, yes, of course I come as a child. My wife says I act like a child all the time. <laughs> Right? All the wives just laughed at that. <laughs> Maybe it's your mother. I'm going to leave that out. Um, but, you wives, this isn't like a let, letting you out of it either. Because just because your husband knows how to have fun, doesn't mean he's a little child. I want you to know that. I don't know why us guys don't like to grow up. We don't. But we like to have fun. Amen. And sometimes we can be mature in our fun. And sometimes we intentionally aren't. It's just the way it is. Okay? But it's not that we're not mature. It's just that we've chosen not to be at this point. That was a neat sound. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The Lord has said move on. So <laughs> the Lord said, right on. <laughs> Jesus is actually saying you have to come to him with faith like a child. That's really what he's saying. You have to come with faith like a child. It's faith that will receive love and truth without question. It's faith that will receive love and truth without question. We don't, you watch your children, they don't question where you need to take them, where you're trying to do for them, because they know you love them, and they have faith that you'll take care of them. Most of us who are 16 or older, have trouble taking things like this by faith. You ever notice that? Most of us, once we get to be that 15, 16 year old, we kind of say, uh, I got this. Right? So we start really pulling away from our parents. Really, I, mean, I know somewhere around 11 or 12 we start that. But at 15 and 16, we start feeling some freedom. You know, the, the uh, culture says that we can get our license at that point. So things start changing when we get that kind of freedom. But Jesus says, come, like, come with faith like a child and you'll receive freedom in your soul. Freedom from your parents and freedom in your soul are different. Freedom from your parents gives you the ability to make some decisions. Freedom in your soul sets you free in a way that allows you to connect to who God is. That freedom gives you a vision of how to follow Jesus with all of your life. So, as I was thinking about how I could relate this VBS theme into our sermon today, I found myself drawn to what it means to be loved. After all, on the back of all of our VBS shirts, it says, All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. And we all know the verse from 1 John 4, 8 that says God is love. So if God is living in us and God is love, this kind of makes love seem to be the theme. So what does it mean to be loved? I mean, we all want to be loved, right? Yes. We all want to be loved. 
We all want to love and we all want to feel love. Without love, we're all alone. Or at least we feel alone. So love matters to us as human beings. And this is the point where you would expect me to go into what each kind of love is. I just found out this last week. You've been studying that on Wednesday nights. Yes. Pretty awesome. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to give you a real quick overview of the four different kinds of love. There's Eros love. That's the love that's felt in the body. It's a love of the heart. And it draws us to want to be with one another. I'm sorry, with the one who makes us feel loved. Okay? This would be like your spouse. This is that kind of love. Phileo love is a love that's of the soul. The love that connects us to our surroundings. It helps us to see our culture and draws us to be a part of that. This is the love that creates friendships. Agape love is parental love. Now there's a lot of ways of looking at agape love. And I'm going to, going to give you a very small part. I know that you went a lot deeper, even last Wednesday, I think, is what I was told. But agape love is parental love. It's the love that sacrifices all for the one receiving it. Agape love is unconditional. There's the key. It's unconditional. And so, it will do whatever it takes to show its love. Ooh, I wonder if the church is there. Uh, that's probably another sermon. And then there's storge love. Storge love is love of community and family. This love holds relationships together. Even when they aren't healthy. Think about that. Storge love is what we mean when we say blood is thicker than water. This is the love that holds to what is known and is often the reason, catch this, is often the reason for spiritual stagnation in people. Because people don't always want to go away from what's familiar. It's familiar. I know it's not healthy, but he loves me. That's story love. Okay? So get that. Now, now that we understand what these basic meanings of love is, let's ask the question again. What does it mean to be loved? Think about the love you felt from your parents or the people around you as you were growing up. When you were young, when we're all, when we are young, we feel a strong need to be loved and accepted. That's why it's so hard for children who are neglected to connect with other people. When, people, when children are neglected, they struggle to allow other people in to love them. When a child is starved for love, they either close themselves off to the world or they go looking for something that will help them feel connected. The passage of scripture that was shared this morning comes from the New Living Translation. It says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. This is a godly love. And it's the scripture, as the scripture tells us, this is that God could not be stopped. He could not be stopped when it came to his love for us, his creation. He went all the way for us. All the way. No stop, no thought, just this is who I love. I'll do whatever it takes. Unconditional. He sent his only son to show us the love, the true love that he knew it would cost him even before he came. Do you realize that? Jesus knew how we were going to treat him before he came. He knew how he was going to die. A worldly death. He knew he was going to be betrayed. He knew all of that. And he came anyway because 
His love was bigger. His love was unstoppable. It was unconditional. To me, that's unbelievable. It's truly amazing. It's truly love. Unconditional love, because this love came no, it would be rejected by the ones it was coming for. Think about that. Let that sink in. It brings me back to the question, what does love mean? What does it mean to be loved? It means you and I are worth the sacrifice. It means there's nothing that can stop me from doing what it takes to reach you. It means I will because I must do what it, what you need so that we can be together. You get that? I will do what you need so that we can be together. That's unconditional love at its core. That's agape. But the passage goes on. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. And His love is brought to full expression in us. Now wait a minute. Are you saying I have to love other people the same way God loved me? Yeah. I mean, in a word, yeah. Right? It's pretty simple. God loves you unconditionally, yet you have to love others. That's what it means. We're given the assignment to love in the same way we've been loved. That's a pretty tough assignment. God loves unconditionally. Unconditional love doesn't hold any strings. It doesn't say that I only love you if... It says, I love you no matter what color or race or nationality you are. That doesn't matter to me. I love you no matter what your preferences are. I love you no matter where you live, where you go. I love you because I love you. Because you're a person. Because God loved me. And he changed me. And he made me into a person that can accept His love. And if I can accept His love, I want to give His love to you. Hmm. Can you imagine trying to love somebody like God loves you? I mean, truly, can you really imagine just trying to love somebody like God really loves you? I have good news. See, this love is not expected of you. You're not really expected to love like God loves. It's true. You're not. You know why? Because you're incapable of loving like God loves. But, if we read on, and we go to verse 13, it says, And God has given us His Spirit as proof that we live in Him and He in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father hath sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Verse 15 is the one we've been talking about all week with the kids. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. There you have it. Even God understands that you and I can't love people the way He loves us. That's why He gave us the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. That's what he was telling his disciples as he was getting ready to leave. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. That's John 16, 7. For those of you who take notes. The advocate is the Holy Spirit and he comes to live in us as we allow and invite him in. It is the Holy Spirit living in us that gives us the strength to love unconditionally. It's actually the Holy Spirit living through us that loves unconditionally. Every time you and I try to love unconditionally, we mess it up. 
But every time we allow God to love somebody through us, it's perfect. Because God's perfect. And His Holy Spirit living in us is way more in tune than anything we'll ever get. So what does it mean to be loved? It means to receive God Himself. Receive what He has made you to receive. It means to receive His love freely and willingly. It means to be changed by His love and allow His love to love others through us. What does it mean to be loved? It means all who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them and they live in God. So what's stopping you from being loved today? As we prepare to hear from the VBS children as they come in and they're going to sing to us and they're going to share some things with us, as we prepare for that, will you ask yourself if you've received His love today? If you've received His love into your life, if you need to pray, come and pray. These altars, I promise you, those kids and those kids' workers, they don't mind if you're up here praying. If you need to bring someone with you to help you pray, do it. The most important thing is that you know the love of God. That's what we've been trying to tell our children all week. We definitely don't want you to miss it. So, whatever you do this morning, don't let this day end without receiving God's love. He's given all so that you can receive His love. All. All the way, no stops. His agape love could not be stopped. He loves you, and He wants you to truly know His love. Will you receive it?